All righty, it's Monday and today we're going to be finishing up the suspension install on one of the coolest stepside Silverados I've had my eyes on for a very long time. I guess maybe not counting the Copa truck because I think that one was pretty dang cool. But um, I like this truck. I love step sides. Last time we did the atomic fabrication coilovers up front, put some Beltec drop spindles on there and completely rebuilt the front end of this thing so it'll drive nice and tight. And of course, now we have the adjustable shocks. I went through this morning and I fine tuned the ride height. So now is it exactly the same height that it was when it came in because the customer wanted the same height, just of course with the handling improvements of the Atomic Fab coilover kit. So now we need to turn our attention to the rear and this is gonna be like part two of the ultimate suspension install on a GMT 800 Silverado. And this will work for two wheel drive or four wheel drive. Um, we're gonna start by doing the Atomic Fab upper shock mounts, which are exactly those right there except uh, they're not welded on yet. So we'll get those installed. We've got the Viking double adjustables and we have the Caltrack set up. And in a nutshell, that's what we're doing out back. He already has a flip kit installed. It already has a C-notch, although there is some work that I need to do on the C-notch because whoever welded it in before, well, they did not do a very good job. So we're gonna fix that up. We're gonna get the Caltrax installed and the atomic shocks, Viking shocks with atomic brackets. So let's get to it by getting the bed off. Before we get started on today's action, I wanted to take a second and talk to you about the sponsor of this video, which is Solder Stick. Now, if you have any sort of wiring on your car or truck or boat or inside your house or basically any sort of wiring that needs to join two wires together, you definitely need to check out Solder Stick. Now, one of my favorite products that they make is this kit right here, which is for uh, heat shrink butt connectors. There's 500 pieces in it, and they go from 10 gauge all the way up, or all the way down, I should say, to 26 gauge. And what makes these so special is basically there's a little band of solder encased in some heat shrink tube. So basically, once you join your two wires together with the stripped ends, you apply a little bit of heat, and that solder is going to flow in between the two wires, and it's going to make the connection. And the heat shrink, of course, is going to make sure it's weatherproof. So one and done, no crimping required. Just put a little heat on there, whether it's from a lighter or from a campfire or a torch or a heat gun, whatever you have, if it's warm enough to melt that heat shrink in the solder, it's gonna make a connection and it's weather tight and it's gonna last for a very long time. Um, solder stick has a special going on right now. If you use the code LT20, you can save 20% off your order, whether that's the heat shrink butt connectors like this or their heat shrink ring terminals. I've got both of them here because as we do wiring, we use pretty much all the stuff. So check out solder stick and use the code LT20. All right, guys, we got the single cab back in the shop. I got it pressure washed because I hate working on stuff that's dusty and dirty and nasty. So we cleaned it up because I like stuff that's clean, but unfortunately we just found something that's gonna add a little bit more work, but it's a, I don't know if I'd say major, but it's a safety issue that we need to correct. If you guys saw my short the other day, you probably know what I'm talking about. But whoever put this C-notch in is like the perfect example of your buddy that says he can do it cheaper but who really has no idea what he's doing and should not, should seriously not pick up the welder. But let me take that back. 
The welds on the C-notch, they're not the worst in the world, but you see this orange line that I drew here? Uh, that is the shape of the frame that they cut out. For some weird reason, I don't know why, you can see it a little better on this side. And let me put my light on it to really give you the full effect. But yeah, you can see that little, uh, that notch right there. That's all factory frame that's missing. And on top of that, when they uh, welded the notch in, they didn't weld everything all the way around. There's several seams that are just left open. Like for example, um, this bottom seam right here, zero welding on it. The gap here in between the notch and the frame, again, I'll put some light on it for you. No welding there. The notch itself is welded on the bottom side, but um, yeah, right there, you can see that gap. And then on that side down there, there's like a one inch gap. So um, needless to say, we cannot send this truck out like this. I talked to the owner um, and we're gonna fix this up as right as we, <clears throat> excuse me, possibly can. Now, ideally we might put a bit of a step notch in there, but basically what I wanna do is come in here, um, clean up all these edges. I'm gonna weld all the seams that they, that they made, and then I'm gonna plate this on the backside, and that should strengthen this thing up. Luckily there is a fair amount of material in here. Um, if it were me, and if I were gonna do this from scratch and we had a perfectly good frame that had been untouched, um, I would put in the same notch that I did on both of my chassis over here, the four wheel drive and the two wheel drive. This is from a company called Overkill by Designs. And this I believe is like 3 16 plate. It boxes in on all the sides. And of course I fully welded everything top to bottom and then did not cut a ridiculously unnecessary amount of material away, which if, if, the, if you did that, just stop, like put the welder down, put the cutting torches down, please do not do that again, because come on, it's, it's, it's like a safety thing. I mean, seriously, like if you can't do it right, please don't do it. And I'm all about encouraging people to get out there and get in the shop and work on stuff. But if you're unsure, and this is not like sarcastic, this is, you know, this is genuine. If you're unsure about your abilities to do something, especially on a structural component like a frame, ask for help. There's nothing wrong with asking for help because I would much rather you, you know, hire somebody or find someone who knows what they're doing rather than be left with a frame that looks like that. Anyway, um, let's get this stripped down. I'm going to make the repairs on the frame and we'll continue along with our Caltrack install, which is really the main reason why we're here. One last thing worth mentioning, I took a bunch of measurements of the driveline angles, engine drive shaft and differential, just to make sure that we get this thing nailed because of course the uh, spring perches on the bottom of the axle for the flip kit, of course they're not welded on because why would you do it the right way? But good thing they're not welded because the angles are incorrect. This diff needs to be pointed uphill a little bit more because you have this kind of horseshoe shaped angle where it needs to be Parallel, so engine, drive line, differential. You want this angle here to be the same, but opposite is that angle there, which we don't have. So we'll get it fixed up.
right guys, Tuesday morning, the sun's out, it's a beautiful day. We're starting off with a big old monster and a Maverick breakfast burrito. Had to go get the trailer. We are, I gotta make some room in the shop. So uh, we're bringing the drag truck chassis to the house. And uh, yeah, cause I'm about to start on the ugly truck cam swap. So off to work. Spent a bunch of time with the MIG welder and I got everything kind of patched back together, welded up, and now it's where I would consider it to be like the bare minimum of strength for a notch. And then we're gonna plate it in, which is gonna basically double the strength and bring it up to a level where I'm comfortable sending it out the road. So did a bunch of welding, like I said, we welded the seams um, under here, along here, <clears throat> excuse me, and everything on the inside, all those seams that were cut, which Probably shouldn't have been cut like that, but we got it all patched back together. And like I said, now we're gonna add a plate on the inside of the frame to box it in. And like, like I mentioned, then we'll be at a level where I'm comfortable with it. Uh, this is what the patch is gonna look like for the driver's side. Just took a little bit of cardboard, did a little bit of marking, a little bit of cutting, and that's what it's gonna look like. This is uh, 3 16 steel, which is just a little bit thicker than the material the frame is made out of. So um, it'll be nice and strong. And for what it's worth, the notch here or the reinforcement that these guys did, I think that's quarter. So when we're all done, this will be nice and beefy. But to get that thing cut out, I now get to use a tool that I've owned for probably two, three, three or four years, honestly. And I've never even opened it up until today. And that's because one, I haven't had an air compressor for all that long. And then two, I just, kind of forgot about it. It was in my basement at the house in Utah. Now that we went to Colorado, it's at the shop. We have compressed air. It's a plasma cutter. Um, I picked this guy up way back when I got my TIG and my MIG. Um, it's a Forney 20P. It's kind of just a smaller, basic uh, 120 volt plasma cutter. But we used to have these on the show and I know they work pretty decent. So we're gonna get this thing cut out, and try out my brand new tool. That's a little bit old. <laughs> I just like literally just tapped it and it fell right out, so. Do you have a chipping hammer? No. Do I look like the kind of guy who has a chipping hammer? Do you see a stick welder here anywhere? So I'm gonna bring a chipping hammer in. I got grinders. No, a chipping hammer, just knock it right off, right off, oh yeah. Yep. I do not own one. Yeah, I'll bring, I got a three, I'll bring one in. Okay. That's a clean cut though. It's not, I mean, not it's bad. Not, it's not bad. My little straight edge, it makes it, it kind of hitches up. Yeah, yeah. I want to get a drag tip for mine. I really want one. 
But that's clean. I like it. Mm -hmm. okay. It's quicker than gotta, a. Uh, we just got to be in the wall, apparently. Yeah. That stinks. Or we need to pick up a big 110 board. All right, we got the back side of this all protected with the steel it coating. Back side of the reinforcement plate is coated. Slips in like so. And then we'll weld it. The cut mode is not intended for welding. Just in case you're wondering. All right, Friday afternoon, and we are almost done with this job. Running a business takes a lot of time. I used to be able to do YouTube seven days a week, but here we are. Anyway, um, I have one side all patched up, reinforced, and nice and strong, boxed on the inside, fully welded, and ready to go. Now all I have to do is cut out the cardboard template for side number two, weld it in, Chop a couple of uh, brackets off here, weld a few more brackets on there, remove that one, and then the project is gonna be done for the day because it's Friday <laughs> I'm running out of time. Anyway, um, one quick note on the welding over there. You probably noticed that I did grind this top edge nice and flush. Uh, normally, you're not supposed to grind welds down, but um, most of the weld actually is still present, and that is because I think on this, my 2000 and 2001 trucks don't have this, but on this 99, early 2000, um, you can see this lip of the frame is actually rolled in. It goes down quite a bit. So that leaves a nice, if I can put that in there, that leaves a nice rounded valley that I can fill with weld and then grind smooth. So we still have plenty of strength and it's nice and flat across the top. So the bed rail can, you know, sit perfectly flush. Anyhow, a um, little bit more plasma cutting to do. This is my second pattern, I'll get that cut out. And then the only thing I have left to do, as you can see those two openings right there, I need to plate those in and I'll build another one on that side. It'll look kind of like, kind of like that, that gap right there, I'll plate that in. Um, again, because this is a little bit different from the later model frames, but that's all right, not a big deal. Let's get back to cutting. Gotta say, I am impressed with how thin of a cut that thing makes. Except when you start in the middle of the sheet. All right, straight off the plasma cutter. I just did a little bit of cleanup to get rid of the slag. I took my time to make sure the pattern was as tight as it could be. Boom, and that's what we have. Nice plated in notch. I am gonna have to bend it, as you can see, to follow the contour of the frame. So I'll kinda, you know, bend the front end like that. That's the gap I'm gonna fill in with the plate like I told you. 
But uh, pretty much that's what it's going to look like, guys. One boxed in C notch. For a minute I am gonna make the very last piece that we got to do just that little filler filler panel in between my boxing plate and the rest of the frame all right something like that except shoot I can't get it out dang it Got it. Let's try that again. One of the realities of working on custom trucks like this, or cars, or any sort of a project, even you know remodeling homes and stuff, is occasionally you find mistakes that someone else made, and it's up to you, or in this case me, to correct them because I am not the type of person that can turn the other way or turn a blind eye to a problem that exists, even if I'm not the person who originally did the installation. That's exactly what went on here. Um, whoever did the original install on this, yeah, maybe they forgot to weld the inside. I don't know, but it's up to me to make it right. And even though it took more time, I am okay with that because now when I send this truck down the road, I have no worries about what this frame looks like. We have a fully boxed, fully welded frame inside and out. The C-notch is nice and strong and I have no worries. Like I said, no worries about sending this truck down the road. No regrets, right? No rag grits, <laughs> like that tattoo on. Anyway, um, so originally I wanted to have the rear suspension completely installed, but this whole C-notch thing kind of threw me for a loop and took a little bit more time to fix. Uh, so that's gonna have to wait till next time. I am all out of flap wheels right now, so I can't do, I can't grind down the old shock mounts. But next time what we're gonna do, cut off the factory shock mounts both here and there. We're gonna weld on the atomic shock mounts there and there. We are gonna paint this up a little bit so it doesn't rust. Then we'll do the same thing on the axle. Cut off the original shock mounts, weld on the atomic ones, install the Caltrax and the leaf springs, then put this thing back together for good send it down the road so then I can get to my camp swap because that's the one thing I am wanting to finish up. Uh, Friday afternoon at 6 17 p.m. we have one two three four four vehicles in the shop. It's been another busy week so no complaints there. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. Come back soon and have a good one.